These days, almost all of us have questions about the economy. Here to provide some answers, we hope. Early show financial contributor Ray Martin and investment advisor Jill Schlesinger. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. A bunch of questions. We're going to go right to them. You ready? Absolutely. Let's uh, head out to uh, Florida with this first one for Ray. Hi, my name is Maria Knoll. I'm from Naples, Florida, and I'm really concerned about um, how much I'm going to have to pay to support people who can't afford their housing. Ray, take a shot at that. You know, her question galvanizes a lot of folks out there. Just this mortgage bailout program and this home affordability program from the president, is, a lot of people are upset about this. Over 90% of people are current on their mortgage because they bought an affordable home. Right. Or they had an emergency fund, so if they lost their job, they can still make their payments. That modification program is going to give people a 2% interest rate mortgage, as low as 2%, stretch it out for years, even pay off some of their principal. Some people are going to save over $1,000 a month. And the only stick here is they have to sign a letter saying they'll get credit counseling if they get a government bailed out mortgage. It's not enough of a stick. I say, Mr. President, you're not done here. You got to say, these people can't make a reasonable decision about credit and spending. Mm -hmm. Then what you need to do is freeze their credit and credit cards, use some of the savings and make them pay down their credit cards and auto loans with that and build up an emergency fund if they're getting this subsidized mortgage. Don't use it to inflate your lifestyle. You owe a responsibility to get a government mortgage <laughs> this is to Ray, pay it down. This is Ray's Howard Beale. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not going to take it out of the moment. Absolutely. Right. People are upset about that. But, and, so, Rightfully so. Can't give a bailout to everybody, but make the people who get one be responsible with it. All right, there you go. Let's go to another question for Jill. Hi, my name is Nick Veach from Costa Mesa, California, and my question is, when will the private sector hiring start to increase? Mm, great question, and obviously the key to a lot of people's worries right now. Certain parts of the private sector are going to start picking up in the next six months, those that are affected by the stimulus bill. So health care spending, some education spending, you will see some tick up there. If you're looking for a job in the financial sector, I think you are looking for a long time. Right. So what you really want to do is look at that stimulus bill, identify the areas and the sectors that will be helped, look in those areas, that's where you're going to see the first pickup. And buff up your resume to make it look more uh, user-friendly for Absolutely. that industry, right? Absolutely. All right, let's go to uh, another question for Ray. All right. Hi, my name is Mike Alberts. I'm from Oahu, Hawaii. And my question is, um, as we see the stock market continue to decline, um, uh, how relevant is that to the general health of our economy? That's a really good question. That's a great question. You know, the stock market started declining in October of 2007 before all this bad economic news comes out. Why is that? The stock market is typically a discounting mechanism, thinks about forward-looking events. If you go back and look at the, at the recession in 1973 to 74, the stock market it, it, uh, fell about 45 percent, but then it jumped about 37 percent in 1975. And in the Great Depression, the stock market jumped in 1933 by 54 percent. The bad news wasn't over. Things were still tough, but the stock market then climbed. It leads a recovery even while bad economic news is coming out. So it's sort of the canary in the coal mine and the bad Bad times, and then it looks for nuggets of good information and starts going up before the economy shows positive signs. We'll keep we're, we'll, we're going to keep looking for that, <laughs> that uh, silver lining. All right, how about another question for Jill? Email. 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 All right, here's an email. I have uh, a life insurance policies from four different companies. Should I keep paying the premiums, take out loans for the current face values, or what? That's from Robin in North Carolina. As more insurance companies are coming under pressure, I think what's really interesting about this question is people are saying, hey, what happens if my insurance company goes broke? And that's a very important question. If you have an insurance policy with cash value, and this is the, the question that's at hand in this email, that cash value is really a general obligation of the insurance company. So ostensibly, the insurance company goes broke, you think, I'm done. But actually, each state has a system in place to help insurers, insureds, the people who hold the policy, policy, mm -hmm. recap what they've lost. So very important. It's usually about $300,000 per policy, both term and cash value. All right. Ray Martin, Jill Schlesinger, thank you very much.